Good morning. <laughs> Nothing like waiting until the last minute, right? <laughs> uh, welcome to Bethesda Methodist Church. It's good to see everyone here this morning. The boat's kind of listing on this side, isn't it? <laughs> um, today is the first Sunday in Advent, and we have a special greeting um, that I'm going to read, and you don't have to worry about reading it. It might be hard to read because it's in red. You know what time it is and how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so thankful for this day and for the opportunity to come together as your faith community, Lord, and we just thank you and praise you for that. And we ask as we gather that you would open our hearts and minds to you, fill us with your Holy Spirit. May this be a time that draws us closer to you and closer to each other as we hear your word proclaimed. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now I'd like to invite Joe Yates forward to light our Advent candle. Good to be here today. This is the first candle, the reading for December 3rd. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Isaiah 60, verse 2 through 3. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Thank you. If you would please stand and worship with us.
well, disappeared on me. Our gospel lesson comes to us this morning from the Gospel of Mark. You notice we changed from Matthew to Mark because now we're in a different liturgical season, the season of Advent. So we start off in Mark 13, verses 24 to 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven. And the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender, and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us bow for a moment of prayer. Gracious and almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm calling my sermon, Keep Awake. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. It's a time of joyous anticipation. Christmas is coming. There are decorations to put up. I know you all already have them all put up, right? (laughs) But not at my house. There's still decorations to put up lights to string, there are cookies to bake, cards to address and to mail, there are presents to wrap, and as Andy Williams said so many years ago, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Our scripture lesson for today reminds us that there is more to anticipate here than an exchange of gifts on Christmas morning. Mark's gospel has Jesus explaining to several of his disciples that there will be a time of tribulation, of suffering, of misery, but following that time, Christ will come again. I don't know about you, but a pandemic that seems to be lingering on, a contentious political atmosphere, wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, and a racial divide in this country, that kind of seems like tribulation to me, and kind of suffering and misery. This year, perhaps more than any other year, I say, come, Lord Jesus, come. There are three things upon which to focus. First, what are we anticipating? What are we waiting for? The coming of the kingdom. We're waiting for the kingdom to come in its fullness. Jesus ushered the kingdom in when he was born into this world, but we still live with one foot in the reality of this world, and if we are faithful, one foot in the kingdom. We're striving to live faithful and obedient lives. When the kingdom comes in its fullness, it will be a cataclysmic event. 
which will set all things right. It will be the time when love will reign in every heart and mind. To say we're waiting for the second coming is to say that we're waiting for the day when love will truly rule the world. We're waiting for the day when love will rule our own hearts and minds. Love is God, God is love, Christ is love. In that day, we will no longer hunger or thirst for righteousness because we will be filled. We will no longer harbor anxiety, tension, nervousness, stress, depression, sadness, anger, or fear. And by the way, all those things are things that lead to illness and death. Because we will be filled with joy, peace, faithfulness, love, mercy, forgiveness, kindness, compassion, and self-control. Those are the things that bring life and wholeness. On this first Sunday in Advent, we light the candle symbolizing Christ as our hope. We're hoping for the day when Christ will truly reign in all of our hearts and minds. The second focus of our scripture is on the fig tree. There is a sign for us in the fig tree. The fig tree had the distinction of being the only tree to change with the seasons in the area where Jesus lived. That made it a great illustration for several Bible sto stories. We're told in today's lesson that when the fig tree puts forth its first leaves, the new life, the new season is coming. It's a sign that summer is near, and so too does it signal the coming of Christ. Because the coming of Christ is the coming of new life in Christ. It's a time of salvation and redemption. The third focus is on waiting, preparing for the arrival, and staying alert and awake. The waiting we do during Advent is not the kind of waiting we do in the doctor's office. Isn't that what we look like when we're in the doctor's office? It made me get here on time, but now they're not on time, right? The waiting we do during Advent is an action verb. We're called to actively prepare as we await Christ's coming. We need to be aware, alive, attentive, alert, awake. We need to be thinking about the expectations and demands that we can let go of so that we can make room in our hearts and minds to accept Jesus. We prepare our hearts and minds to receive Christ through works of piety and works of mercy. Works of piety help us to build our relationship with God. They include acts of worship, acts of devotion, including participating in worship services, partaking of Holy Communion, Bible study, scripture reading, meditation. Works of mercy help us to build our relationships with others through works of compassion and justice. When we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those who are sick or in prison, we're preparing our hearts and minds to receive Christ. We must not allow ourselves to be distracted by what the world tells us is important. We must stay alert. The world will distract us with stuff that we're told we must have. People spend the night, I don't know if this happened this year because I don't get the regular news on my TV, so you'll have to tell me. But for many years, people have been like sleeping out all night at Best Buy and folding chairs, waiting to get the new TV. Does anybody know, did that happen this year? No? Maybe that went away with the pandemic. I don't know. But anyway, you, you get what I'm saying. The world tells us we need the best new TV, the best new camera or computer. And this did happen this year. The day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday sales this year were $9.8 billion. Now, because of the pandemic, most of these sales were online instead of in the stores. But these sales happened 
while people are out of work, while people are hungry, while people are sick, while people are at war. Now, don't get me wrong. I've bought Christmas presents for my family. I'm not saying not to do that. Uh, I'm just saying that we're off track as a people when our most important thing is trying to get the newest gadget that's out there, right? Waiting in line for it, and overnight even, stuff like that. We must turn our eyes toward Jesus. We must prepare our hearts and minds to receive a gift greater than anything Best Buy or Amazon could possibly sell us. We must be ready to receive the love of God into our hearts. Don't be distracted. Keep hope alive in your heart. Receive the healing, the salvation of our Lord and Savior. Salvation and healing are the same thing. We are healed when we are saved, and we are saved when we are healed by Christ. Prepare your hearts and minds by letting go of the unnecessary and make room for accepting Christ. But you have to keep awake. Amen. I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward, please, and we'll take an offering. It's my fault. I had to take that out.
you would stand for the doxology. Gracious God, we pray that you receive our humble offering, multiply it, and use it to the glory of your kingdom, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We come to the time in our worship service where we make our intercessory prayers for others in our community. Oh, we've got a few. Traveling Mercies for the Carter family. Craig Kuntz is having back surgery. Elsie Kuntz. Jamie McGlamory. Kyle Wilkes family. Reed Hedrick family. Bruce Pearman. Ella Foster has cancer. Unspoken. Kelsey and Bradley, and another unspoken. Are there any others that you want to lift up that maybe you didn't get put into the book? Brinkley. Say it again. Ralph Brinkley. Ralph Brinkley. Donna. Donna. Donna Bell is not doing too well. Elijah Cross. A uh, family that's friends with our family. Uh, there's a little baby that's three months old that's fighting for her life right now at Brenner's. She's on the ECMO machine. If any of you know what that is, that's like the last ditch hope trying to get her back. Her name's Frances, little baby Frances. Any others? Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we are so grateful uh, to be able to come together as your faith community and to have the community to lean on as we face the challenges of life and to support each other um, as we help others face challenges in life because we all have challenges. And so, Lord, we ask that you would help each one of us and all of those that we have just mentioned as prayer concerns to be able to rest in our faith and knowing that all things are in your good hands and that you're always working for good in our lives, always working to bring blessing. Help us to rest in our faith in that and to receive your gifts of healing and mercy and forgiveness and love and grace. Help us to be open and have our hearts open and our minds open to receive. And help us to be bearers of those gifts to others, those who are suffering, those we've just mentioned and others that were left unmentioned. Help us, Lord, each one of us here today when we walk outside of this sanctuary to be bearing your gifts of love and grace with each person we encounter. And many times when we pray for that, we walk out and right away we encounter somebody that just does something really aggravating to us. And it's really a test of whether we're gonna be able to carry that love and grace. But Lord, just strengthen us and help us to remember who we are and whose we are so that we might be bearers of your love and your light. We ask this for this congregation, for this church sitting here in welcome, that you would make us beacons of your light and your love, and that we would attract so many people who want to come and know Jesus. That is our fervent prayer, Lord. And now we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You would stand. Santa Claus. You may be seated. So, today we have an administrative board meeting at 7 o'clock. It's a called meeting, so it has a purpose. Jeff, what's the purpose? Oh, it's a regular scheduled one, but it just changed the... Okay. So it's a regular scheduled one. So everyone's invited. Um, but if we vote on something, only members vote. So 7 o'clock, and is it in the fellowship hall? OK. So then let's see. This week, I know um, Chrissy's Circle is meeting. And the next week on the 12th is the general meeting for the women. And what else is happening? We have caroling on the 10th. Who's coming out for caroling? Okay, I see some good voices. Anything else? No other announcements? Is everybody copacetic, Linda Taylor? <laughs> Do you all know what copacetic means? In good order. Y'all are in good order, aren't you? Yeah. 
Okay. Take it away, Deppy. I stand. <clears throat> Okay, so here's the thing, folks. <laughs> I don't think I can get them all handed out today, but there's next week too, right? <laughs> so if you did not get one, don't panic. <laughs> uh, just don't move as fast as I used to. <laughs> What'd she say? <laughs> Yeah, I know your understanding of that. Okay. Receive this blessing and benediction. Go forth in peace in the sure knowledge that God is walking with you. The Holy Spirit is with you, and he is helping to prepare you for what's coming. So stay awake and receive his blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.